In this video we're going to be looking at how to make a maze game using Microsoft PowerPoint. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the title slide and I'm going to change it to a blank layout because we won't need any of the text boxes here. So we can just go to layout and make that blank. Then I'm going to insert a few additional blank slides that we'll use for our beginning slide as well as our menu. So I'm going to insert a picture. You'll have a few different options, but I'm just going to go online pictures. I'm going to make this a jungle theme. So I'll search for a some kind of jungle theme picture and we'll insert that. Then we'll just drag it to resize so that it covers the entire slide. In the bottom left, you can see the URL where this photo came from. So I'm just going to remove that. Then I'm going to go to insert under shapes and I'm going to insert what will become our start button. I'm going to go to text box and just put in the word begin. I'm going to increase the font size of that so it's easier to read. Just highlight the font, go to the Home tab, and change the font size. And I'm just going to reposition that button, kind of centered. Now on slide number two, I'm going to make a menu slide. So I'm actually going to uh, duplicate the first slide because I want to use the same background. And then I'm going to copy and paste this button three times so that I can use that for um, the three different levels that I'm going to create. So I'm just going to change this one to say level one. And then I'm going to move it over to the far bank of the river. And I'm going to copy and paste, or you can use control D to duplicate, um, two more of these, which I will make for levels two and three. So the idea later on is that when your player clicks one of these level buttons, it will take them to that level of the maze. On slide three, I'm going to make this our losing slide. So whenever a player loses, they'll be directed to this slide. I'm going to maybe use a picture of fire to represent that they have burnt their chances. So I'll just use this one, resize the picture again. If this designer opens up in the right hand side, you can just exit it. You don't need it for anything. Resize the picture so that it covers the entire slide. And we're going to need to let the player know that they have lost. So we'll insert a text box here. This one's very narrow for some reason, but I'll put in the text and then just widen it. Highlight the text and increase the size so it's easier to read. I'm also going to add a background color so that uh, the text is easier to read. So centering the text, then under shape format, you'll see two buttons for um, shape fill and shape outline. So I'm just going to change the fill color so that it sets the text off a little bit. And then we also have some effect options. So I'm going to add a bit of a bevel edge just to set the text even more off from the background. Now our player is going to need somewhere to go after this, so I'm going to duplicate this text and make this into a button that will take them back to the menu slide. So we'll call this start again. And maybe I'll change the background color of this other message just so that it's a little more clear that these are two different things. One's just a message, the bottom one will actually be a button. On slide four, I'm going to make this the winning slide. 
So I'm going to choose another picture. This one a little more hopeful and optimistic. So maybe we'll look for some kind of sunshine or something like that. Oh, this one with the sunlight looks pretty cool. We'll use that. Resize it once more. Again, that designer opened on the side. You can just exit it. You won't need it. And I'm going to insert a text box here to let the player know that they have won. Increase the font size there so it's easy to read. Center that on the slide. And then under shape format, I'm going to change the fill color again. Maybe I'll use a blue this time to match the sky. And under effects, I'm going to add the bevel effect again. I'm also going to duplicate that text box so that I can make another button that will again take the player back to the menu so that they can either redo the level if they want to or go on to the next level. So we'll call this one back to menu. And I'm going to just position that down on the right here. No reason for that. Just that's where I feel like putting it. And actually I'll just shorten the text to just say menu just so that the button's a little bit smaller. So then we've got our basic setup. We've got the opening, the menu slide, as well as the winning and losing slides. So I'm now going to insert three more blank slides that will become the actual game levels. I'm really just going to show how to create the first level and then the other two are kind of up to your creative interpretation for what you want to do with them. So the basic thing here is to insert uh, shapes that are going to act as your walls and barriers. So I'm going to insert one shape here first. And we want to link all of these shapes so that when the mouse goes over them, the player loses. So I'm actually going to link this one shape first and then copy and paste it uh, because that way it copies the links with it and I don't need to link everything separately. So under insert, we're going to go to action and you have options for mouse over or mouse click. I want mouse over and we're going to hyperlink this to a specific slide. So you can link to slide and that's going to go to slide number six. You can see all these little previews of where you're going. But anytime the mouse goes over this wall, I want to automatically jump the player to slide six, which tells them they lost. So now when I copy and paste this shape, it also copies and pastes the link with it. So that saves me a lot of time and not having to relink each of the walls individually. So now I'm just going to go and copy and paste a bunch of these walls, changing their dimensions and sizes so that they fit where I want them to go. Now it's important to keep in mind where your level one start button is because when the player clicks that, their mouse is going to stay in the same place to start the level. So I'm going to put a placeholder here for now just so that I keep in mind where the player is starting this level. So this shape will get deleted later, it's just a placeholder for now. Then I'm going to keep making walls constructing around this shape. Now if we go back to the action section, um, just to double check that it's still copying the links with everything. Now I'm just going to design a simple basic maze outline here. You can kind of construct this however you want, but I'm just kind of making it up as I go. A bit of a maze pathway.
you can copy this design exactly if you would like to, or I'd recommend you um, try some creativity and make your own design. But the idea is just to make some kind of maze shape that your player will have to navigate through. Now with this one, I'm going to start creating some barriers or gates, things that our player will have to do to actually make it through. So I'm going to create a gate here, and I'm going to insert another shape. Um, maybe I'll use a star, and the player will have to click the star to move the gate. So first I'll recolor the star yellow. And then I'm going to set an animation path for the gate and we'll trigger it by clicking on the star. Now because I want to use the star as a trigger, I'm going to have to know what its name is. So under shape format, you can go selection pane and I can see that this is called five point star. Then I'm going to go to my gate. I can set an animation path for it. Under animations, I'm gonna scroll down way to the bottom to paths. Just gonna put in a straight path here so it slides out of the way. You can change where it starts and ends by oops, just uh, grabbing this little dot and oh, that's still not the right one. This tiny dot grabbing it and then that faded shape is where it's gonna end up at the end of the animation. So I just want it to slide up out of the way. Maybe I'll have it end about there. And then in the top under trigger, we're going to go on click of, and here's why we need to know the star shape uh, name so that we can click it. So now when the player clicks the star, the animation will be triggered and that gate will slide out of the way. We're going to delete our placeholder here because we know now where everything is. And I'm going to go insert a trophy symbol um, that will show where our player is trying to get to. So I'll just search for trophy. Not very many options, but I'll uh, take this one, insert that. And the player's goal is going to be to get here. Now when they arrive at this trophy, uh, we want to let them know that they've won. So we're gonna go back to insert, to action. And here when they uh, arrive at the trophy, we want to hyperlink to the winning slide. So we can see on the bottom left that slide number seven. So we'll link to slide uh, and then go slide seven. And again, you can see the preview there. Hit OK and OK. Now we need to go back to the menu and take our level one and actually link that to the level. So click the shape, go back to action. And this time we want them to have to click it. And when they click it, we will go to slide number three. We also need to, on our opening slide, link this begin to the menu. So our menu is on slide two. Now if we uh, give this a test run, going to slideshow and in the current slide, um, we can see that if we click there, we'll go to the menu. However, you might notice that if you click anywhere, by default, PowerPoint advances the slide to the next slide. We don't want that to happen if the player is just randomly clicking. So go to the opening slide um, and under transitions you'll see a uh, on mouse click. We need to uncheck that. So if we go back to slideshow, um, oh, it's still doing it. And that is because we didn't apply it to all the slides. So transitions, uncheck on mouse click, then hit apply to all. Now if we go to slideshow from current slide, the player should be able to click anywhere and nothing happens until they click on one of our specific links and then it takes us to where we want to go. Ah, there we go. Mouse hits the wall, we lose. And we haven't linked the start again button, so we should go back and do that. 
start again insert action and we'll just have this go back to the main menu as well on slide 2 and then we'll link this menu button as well on the winning slide also back to slide 2 So that's really the basics of creating the first level. There's all sorts of animations you can do with the uh, objects in the maze game. We only did the one barrier and just a straight animation path. You can do spinning animations, you can have animations appear and disappear when either the mouse clicks a certain thing or um, just goes mouse over something. So get creative and try to create the next two levels on your own.